that a really hard watch. Sarah joins us now, and I have to say, we both both of us were just like, God, you look amazing, and the incredible news that you've been given the all clear, which is just wonderful. How how are you? How are you feeling as you sit here now? Um, Oh, really well, actually. You don't really actually sort of get the all clear. You get the end of treatment, which for everyone else, including my son, said when I said, it's not the all clear, it's end of treatment. He went, it's the same thing, Mum. And I went, <laughs> kind of weirdly, it's sort of weird, because they don't say you're definitely fine. They just say that's the end of the treatment. Right. So, yeah, but it's been a kind of weird, weird journey where you start in one place, go through a whole load of mm -hmm. things and then get to the end. And, and I guess... I guess I feel incredibly fortunate that I had the diagnosis that I did in the year that I did, yeah. and I live in the UK, and I've got the NHS, and, and, you know, the treatment that is available now is available, whereas 40 years ago it wasn't. Yeah. Um, I wanted to look at the documentary as to what the future held. So I guess, I suppose there's lots of things I want to say. My main message was, if you've got any suspicion of any lump, go and get it checked out mm -hmm. because the earlier the diagnosis, the better the outcome. And a lot of our fears are based on quite historic things mm -hmm. and not modern treatment. So I suppose that's a big reason why I kind of thought that's my big <coughs> message. But also, when you go through any, any illness, but breast cancer that I did, um, you don't... If you're lucky enough to have people who love you, they go through it too. And I guess the documentary, I wanted to highlight the fact that, you know, and well, our family are in the... My husband's in the documentary, my kids, yeah. and, and I wanted to show it affects... Everybody. ..a family, cos we often think it's just a, a woman with breast cancer's problem. It, it isn't. It's, no, absolutely. They all have to stand yeah. by and watch. You've been through this very, very personal journey, and I've followed you for years, Sarah, and you are a woman that, you know, you, you don't get beat, OK? And <laughs> you, you are. Right. You're one of those very strong women. I always go... I went to Holly, she's got her fingers in so many pies, Sarah Beanie. <laughs> Um, but, um, yeah, you and you're very, very busy. Um, but why did you decide to let the cameras follow such a personal journey? Um, well, I guess I, I felt that it wasn't... In a way, it would... I guess it started, probably, with thinking about my children and thinking I wanted them to be able to talk to everybody or yeah. anyone about it, from yeah. the taxi driver to a friend at school to, you know, the man on the bus, whatever. I didn't want them to think, oh, I... I better not mm. and so so I kind of thought it was better for them to 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 be able to talk to everyone and I I guess I wanted to share my story about it so that people knew it wasn't as did scary just, as it, they thought it did you know the crew that come in so did you have you known them for a long time yeah no to be honest if this was a random production company who just kind of went oh we could just come in then I definitely wouldn't have done it. Yeah. It's, I made it with uh, Johnny and Angie, and so the three of us made it together, and I really trusted them. And, and Johnny actually said, let's do some video diaries. And I was like, that sounds a really bad idea. And uh, he said, look, we don't have to use them. Just, just do it, and then we don't have to use them. So, um, so I did, and actually, when they were cut into the show, I thought, if you're going to do a documentary, you might as well make it real. And do it. It's very real. You, um, for, for all of us, when we heard the diagnosis, and I imagine for you, when you actually hear those words, you've got breast cancer, it must have been a complete shock. But actually, for you, deep, deep down, it was almost the news you'd been expecting because you'd lost your mum when you were just 10 years old from breast cancer and you were sort of waiting for it to happen. Yeah, I guess I was. I mean, it's probably one of the reasons I've fitted so much into my life, because I thought... I kind of assumed at 39, well, that would be it, and I got to 40 and was like, ooh, yeah. we're still here. <laughs> That's weird. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, yeah, I had sort of expected it, so I guess... You know, it is scary. They say, they say you've got breast cancer, what you hear is what kind of coffin would you like? Oh, and then God. it takes a long time to get your head around the fact that, actually... You know, treatment is amazing yeah. now. For you know, I'm not saying always, and yep. there's terrible, awful situations, but it's it's you know if you catch it early mm -hmm. and and if you check it, it's you know it's good. And the good thing about this documentary, I mean, you go back to the past, you you're in the present, and you and you go to the future, and you even manage to find your mum's medical notes after 40 years. I know. I mean, that is literally unbelievable. It was literally in a basement somewhere, and and you think, I mean, I didn't think a million in a million years would get those. So yeah. So actually, that taught me. Well, it was a fascinating piece of history. That that was more like a like doing a history documentary, really. Although yeah. it was quite. Emotional. I was going to say, it's probably quite healing as yeah. well. Yeah, but actually, that. it was very... In some ways, it was kind of... You know, I had a... I was so lucky, I had a massive support. So I've got my husband and I've got my kids and the 
the crew that I work with are amazing and I'm, you know, I kind of think some people have to go through this On without that. Yeah. So I was really lucky to be able to your them. your boys, there's there's a scene where you I mean, like you said, better to be open and honest with them. They were part when you start to lose your hair, they there's scenes in the documentary where they, they are part of cutting your hair and being part of that. But they have found their own way in which to help you, haven't they? And we saw some of this in, in the other programme that you're working on, where they're, they're in a band yeah. and they've created a song and they are raising money for cancer research. What are they doing? Yeah, I mean, this is... It's amazing, really. So they had, um, you know, over the last few years, obviously there's lots of people who've struggled quite a lot with life generally, and yeah. and they had a band. Well, they've got a band. It's called the Entitled Sons, which they <laughs> call themselves ironically, which is actually They're quite very funny. cool. Look they, at them. They are very, very cool, actually. And so my husband and them have a band together, and and they've done amazingly. So they've released various songs, and, and actually they've just won a competition to play at Glastonbury, so they're playing at Glastonbury this year. Um, but them. they're releasing a, a song on Friday called These Days for Cancer Research, and it's really just a, a song which made me cry, actually, when they played it to me. Oh. But it's about the fact that when you're going through a hard time, things will always get better. Yeah. And, and if, you, if you just... You just have to know that it will get better. And it's incredibly uplifting, and I'm so proud of them to have... Well, they've done what they do best. You know, they're, they're all dyslexic, so they were never going to be doctors. Right. And they just went... The thing is, what we do, Mum, is we write music, so we thought we'd write a song, cos that's what we can do. Good for them. And you couldn't get any better playing at Glastonbury. I mean, oh, my no, goodness. No, that really really means that I'm going to use the I'm going to the Glastonbury and having to use the Glastonbury lose. You'll yeah. do it. You'll do it. <laughs> and, and Sarah, you've got your your new um, new new country lives. Yes. So I've got. Uh, so while I was um, having treatment, I think I'm a little bit. Well, I get a bit. So do I like to do a lot. We, so thought, uh, yeah. Fill oh, no. life. <laughs> fill life. So we made a 20 part daytime series which is called New Country Lives, which is about other people moving to the country. It's really uplifting. It's a lovely, positive jaunt in the country for... It's people who dared have a dream and make it happen. Like you. Yeah. That's exactly what you did. So, yeah, that's on at 5 o'clock every night on Channel 4 at the moment. Well, listen, it's so great to see you doing so well. Honestly, it really is. Come back and see us any time you like. Sarah Beanie versus Cancer, that's the documentary, Monday the 12th of June on Channel 4 at 9pm. And then Sarah Beanie's New Country Lives is on weekdays at 5pm on Channel 4. And don't forget the single for the boys, The Entitled Sons. Uh, that is out on the 9th of June. And they're going to go to Glastonbury to so go and support them. So busy. Thank you. I know. So, so, so busy. Fingers in pie. Yeah. <laughs> I love your hair like that. Thank you. Do you know, I'm almost... I'd, I'd keep it because it's very easy, but, um, but my husband likes it longer. Oh, oh, I think it really suits you, see? Oh, yeah. it's, uh, it's very easy. You'd climb out of bed, go swimming. There it yeah. is. Done, done, done. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.